Worst rapper to ever spit on an open mic Worst rapper to ever get on so many likes Worst rapper to ever blow up an overnight And when my D swell, my D swell friends but OB Trice This is Donald Glover. You likely know him from his various creative pursuits over the past decade. Creator and star of FX's Atlanta, voice of Simba in The Lion King, Lando Calrissian in Solo. In this clip, he was one third of Derek Comedy, one of the very first comedy groups to gain prominence on YouTube. That's right, Lando Calrissian? He's a YouTuber. At the same time as Derek, Glover got a gig writing for, and even starring in, 30 Rock. Don't eat in costume. It was his big break into comedy and led him to star on NBC's cult classic, Community. Troy lost his larynx because for some dumb reason he tried to destroy a flaming troll doll by eating it. Clearly you don't understand anything about defeating trolls. I love this show. In tandem with his acting career, he was also busy with his music, which he released under the alias Childish Gambino. He came up with that name the same way I'll come up with names for my children, a Wu-Tang name generator. While he had been releasing mixtapes and EPs steadily since 2008, his biggest musical moment came with his debut album in 2011, Camp. Critical reception has varied over the years. Some praised the production and his willingness to tackle subjects like race and masculinity, but others derided Glover's scattered delivery and overuse of one-liners. The most notable review at the time came from Pitchfork, who gave it the first ever 16 out of 10. Why no, I can't read periods. In July 2013, Glover signed a deal with FX for a new show called Atlanta. Subsequently, he decided to step back from Community and leave during its fifth season. It's like that old expression says, stay for the puppet episode, then get the hell out. He also announced he would be releasing his second studio album later that year. This period was definitely a tumultuous time for Glover. Shortly after the announcement, he posted a series of written notes detailing various worries and anxieties about himself, his work, and his future, which made many fans concerned about his well-being. But even in a trying time, Glover's diligence stayed constant, as he would be about to unveil the largest creative project of his career thus far. The rollout for Because the Internet was less a rollout and more a roll around, a series of various endeavors that sought to bring the listener into the world Glover was creating. I'll be referring to this world as the Because the Internet Extended Universe, or BTIEU. That's right, Marvel didn't put Glover in the MCU, so he went ahead and made his own universe. The BTIEU revolves around a character known simply as The Boy, as he navigates his empty life. The biggest non-musical component was a 72-page screenplay that the album was meant to soundtrack. The script would be accessible via its own website, and would feature brief videos, cues for when songs were supposed to play, and even buried clues to other unreleased songs. Let's check out the link! And the Academy Award goes to? Yeah, the original link is down, but there exist archival links, PDFs, genius transcriptions, the vinyl edition came with a booklet of the script, there's plenty of ways to check it out. Before we get into the script though, I do want to touch on some of the smaller components of the BTIEU. In the numerous interviews leading up to the album, Glover was effectively acting as an amalgamation of himself, Gambino, and the boy. That meant wearing the same outfit for each one, and overall a more pessimistic tone. To me, like the idea is like, if I want to kill myself, Myself, I will. It's not hard to die. I could do it like right now. But like number two, <laughs> Jesus Christ. The boy spends his days trolling hip hop blogs and famous Twitter accounts, and to reflect that, a handful of Twitter accounts were created. These accounts belonged not only to the boy, but one of his friends and a girl who I'll talk about later. Two short films were released around the same time as the album. The most important one, and arguably the most important piece of the BTI EU that isn't the album or script, is clapping for the wrong reasons. This 30 minute short is an aimless look at the boy's typical day, dodging loan sharks looking for his father, making music, playing video games, partying, pulling teeth out of his nose, and more. Along with Glover, we also see Chance the Rapper, Flying Lotus, Topanga from Boy Meets World, and more who act as figures in the overarching story. All of this is set against the backdrop of The Temple, which was, in real life, the mansion of Miami Heat player Chris Bosh, and where the album was mainly recorded. Four songs were given music videos, 3005, The Worst Guys, 
Telegraph Ave, and Sweatpants. The videos either correspond to events in the screenplay, allude to them, or feature their own narrative. There are even theories that the videos tell their own story about Gambino getting infected by an alien, which might also be a parable about being a black man in America. To promote the album, Gambino went on a worldwide tour. The set design mimicked the mansion that the boy lived in, and most of the set list followed the story in chronological order. I actually saw him live during this tour, it was pretty good. Other promotional performances involved manifesting the boy's surroundings in real life. Tumblr IRL, for example, hosted an event where you could go into the boy's bedroom. An Airbnb also hosted a performance involving recreated spaces from the boy's mansion. There are some other pieces to the BTI EU. I actually found a massive database with pretty much everything that happened during this rollout. It's in the description if you want to check it out. But now, let's go through a quick synopsis of the plot of Because the Internet. After a visual set to intro track the library and two notes to the reader, the story starts with the line, You can't live your life on a bus. That's right! Oh my gosh, I forgot to mention. The story of BTI actually starts with the last track on camp, That Power. It has a story about how Glover was on a bus leaving summer camp, tried to ask a girl out, and got rejected. He ends the song by saying, The truth is I got on the bus a boy, and I never got off the bus. I still haven't. Okay, with that. The script starts with kids being dropped off at a church parking lot. The boy is picked up by his father, Rick Ross. He's, he's not played by Rick Ross, he literally is Rick Ross. The boy is distant the entire ride home. They get back to their mansion, and the boy goes up to his room, pulls up hotnewhiphop.com, and starts trolling in the comments. Jump 15 years later to the boy's disgustingly messy room. After making breakfast, i.e. a Pop-Tart, and hanging out for a bit, his friend Fam pulls up. They take one of the many cars in the garage and drive to Santa Monica. While they're waiting outside a condo for more friends, the boy scrolls through Twitter and finds a tweet saying, Roscoe's wetsuit. He tries Googling it, but he can't find what it means. The rest of the gang comes out, they all head to the beach, and they spot a girl sitting on a surfboard in the ocean. One of them, with stage directions R. Kelly, says, I'm a flirt. He and the rest of the gang go out, and their conversation involves Kangaroo Jack, actual Atlanta trap, and an invite to the party they're having later. Cut to the nighttime. Fam and the boy are trying to get into a club. The boy spots another instance of Roscoe's wetsuit, but is caught off guard when a fight breaks out. He starts filming it, but when it leads to someone getting shot, he drives off with Fam to a jazz lounge. The boy is clearly shaken by this and starts questioning his life choices to his friends, but a James Blakey looking dude shushes them. Back at the mansion, and the boy lies down as spiders descend around him. The mansion party starts, with the boy wandering around and observing the various partygoers' activities. The girl from the beach and her friend find the boy, pull him into a bedroom, and pressure him to get undressed. He is clearly nervous and runs into the bathroom. While sitting on the floor, his ex-girlfriend Vanessa steps out of the linen closet. They go back through said closet and wind up at Coachella. Even though the atmosphere is positive, the two have a fight, she flies away like a rocket, and he's eaten by hipster coyotes. He wakes up in the bathroom and decides to drive to Oakland with his crew. The drive is soundtracked by Lloyd's Oakland and includes another sighting of Roscoe's wetsuit on a billboard. After witnessing a robbery at an in and out they arrive at the home of a girl named Niala. She and the boy have a tense conversation, revealing that they used to be together and even plan to have a kid, which ends with her telling him to grow up and shutting the door on him. Cut to late night when the gang is at a diner. The boy spots some guy riding Roscoe's wetsuit on the wall, asks him what it means, and when the guy says he doesn't know, he loses his cool and threatens to cut him open for the answer. Later on, back at the hotel, the boy crashes a wedding reception and talks to an older gentleman about love and his work. He also describes himself as an internet Bill O'Reilly. Their conversation is interrupted by a ceremony performed by Little Creatures. His response, UNACCEPTABLE! The gang gets back to the mansion, which is rapidly deteriorating. During a party, the boy suddenly loses it and yells at everyone to get out. He goes for a night drive, contemplates his existence, and sees yet another instance of Roscoe's wetsuit. When he gets back, he crushes up pills, mixes it with Pellegrino, and as implied by the script, loses consciousness. After a visual set to death by numbers, he awakens in a hospital. The gang meets him outside and tells the boy that his father has died. The boy flies to Stockholm to get his father's ashes, and he also meets up with a girl named Alyssa, who he had been DMing. They go back to his hotel room, but before the boy can get a drink, Alyssa takes the urn with the intent to dump it as a therapeutic act. The boy follows and resists getting rid of it initially, but is eventually persuaded to pour it into a river. The moment is interrupted by Alyssa's aggressive boyfriend, who turns out to be the guy who wrote What Does the Fox Say? 
When the boy gets back to California, he is introduced by Pham to Naomi, and the two start a relationship. He also starts selling drugs. One day during a drug run, the boy is ambushed by what he believes to be cops. Knowing that he will likely die, he asks if he can be drowned. A visual then plays with him floating in the pool, scored by the non-album track, Yafit Kodo. Suddenly, the boy hears screeches and gunshots. Before he can form a complete thought, silence. The last visual is the boy on his phone in a frozen yogurt shop. There have been many interpretations for this scene, but to me, this is either an earlier clip before his implied death, or it implies that he made the whole story up just to troll you. The end. Phew, that is because the internet. I tried to sum it up as best as I could, and again, I'll leave links to the screenplay if you want to check it out for yourself. But now, I'd like to share my thoughts on the album and script. Oh. Oh, God. Ah, shit. Oh, sorry, there's something stuck in my nose. Give me a second. Oh my God, that was so painful. What, what was even in my nose? Oh, would you look at that? I'm feeling salty today. Why you say that? I'm chilling. Okay, so this whole thing kinda sorta doesn't work for me. First, let me just say, I am of the mindset that an album can have as many supplementary pieces as it wants, but at the end of the day, it needs to be able to stand on its own. Some people may disagree and say that the script is a vital piece, and for better or worse, it is. But it's also intended to complement an album, and if the album were to disappear from the world, none of the other parts of the BTIEU would hold up. No one out there is saying, oh yeah, I love Childish Gambino's screenplay because the internet. What a great standalone work. The hell you mean there's an album? And while we're talking about the script, is it? A script? It reads less like a script and more like a hybrid between a story and a stream of consciousness that just happens to look like a screenplay. There are several instances where the script reads like the boy's inner thoughts, as if Holden Caulfield was a Twitter troll with Final Draft. Also, from a structural standpoint, it's a mess. No one aside from the boy gets any real development, the boy himself doesn't really learn anything, and everything after he gets back from Stockholm, Naomi selling drugs, his death, feels really rushed. It's a shame too because the album itself? I think it's held up really well over the years, and while I don't think it's Gambino's best album, I definitely think it's the one that's the most emblematic of all of his talents. Glover veers quickly and often between different sonic palettes. He tries to navigate our tech-heavy, attention-driven world, and through it all, tries to find the lines between the personas he puts on and the real Donald Glover. The downside of this is, while Glover gets to ex- Excuse don't make noise when they start up, just so you know experiment with different genres, it also means none of those experiments really get fleshed out. If there's one way the script makes the album better though, it's by explaining those abrupt shifts. Why does Worldstar suddenly veer into a jazz breakdown? Because the boy goes to a jazz club after seeing a shooting. Why is Glover singing along to Oakland by Lloyd on Telegraph Ave? Because he's driving to go see a girl. Why does 3005 end with those pitch shifted vocals? because the boy is watching a weird little marriage ceremony. But again, the script shouldn't have to cover for the album's weaknesses. Speaking of 3005, let's touch on Gambino's verses. One big criticism of Glover as a rapper is that he often relies on one-liners. BTI was criticized for the same reason, but I'll defend 3005 for using them. Go why is you lying? Why you move faster. Yes, even that line. The idea of the song is that it's told by someone who loves another, but is also really scared. Scared to open himself up, scared if their love will last, scared if they'll even be alive to see it through. So the jokes he tells, I see as someone trying to keep their guard up with humor, yet can't keep up when the veneer is broken. Sorry, I'm just scared of the future. One other small thing? I don't think Glover's all that great of a vocalist on this. He has good moments, specifically Earn, but the other times he sings, there's just not much in the way of inflection or tone. He's just literally hitting the notes. It's why I've never been able to get into like Flight of the Navigator or the outro on The Worst Guys. I think my biggest issue with all this is the more I dug into this universe, the more I asked myself, what's the point? Videos, articles, comment sections, entire websites dedicated to unraveling this project. It's absolutely dense with intent and possible interpretations. But what's the point? 
Surely this experience has to have meaning. And some of you may say, does it have to? Maybe Glover wanted to make something that expressed the cold, unfeeling nature of social media and the internet. To which I say, sure, but man, that would suck, wouldn't it? As it turns out, the point lies within Roscoe's wetsuit. You may have noticed the phrase Roscoe's wetsuit is referred to often throughout the BTI script. Yet at no point is it ever revealed what it means. And that's because it means nothing. Like, remember asking why, why you want to know, because that's part of it. Like, why, why do, you, do you know why you want to know? <laughs> yeah, you, know, you just want to know? Yeah, right? Okay, cool. Remember that. The wetsuit is to show how things become memed into society with little reason or explanation, and it reflects because the internet's grand thesis. Even with all its performance art and short films and screenplay, the main takeaway is... Nothing. Nothing matters. It's trolling you. Life is trolling you. Life is the biggest troll. And the jokes you showed up. Trollface.jpg That sucks. So the last thing I want to touch on is why I decided to cover this album. Initially, I just wanted to talk about the album and rollout because, like I said earlier, I think it's a good album and it's managed to stick with me over the years. But looking back on this made me realize just how necessary this was for Glover's career going forward. When viewed against the broader context of his career, you can find elements from BTI that were brought back and vastly improved in other projects. A greater emphasis on singing, there's Awaken My Love, the soul and funk inspired follow-up to BTI. Even before that though, there's Sober off the Kawhi mixtape and his two performances on Triple J. Ah! surrealist storytelling with nihilist undertones? I mean, any episode of Atlanta? But I'll highlight Teddy Perkins, The Invisible Car, the Laffy Taffy scene. I'll also shout out Hira Murai, who Glover has worked with consistently since BTI, building a universe by mixing audio and video components. There's Pharos, his music festival, but there have been other instances. A visual parable? There's Guava Island. Another parable about being a black man in America told over four music videos? Cool, the Glover of today did it with just one. My point is, Donald Glover is often considered a renaissance man, capable in so many different fields, but I don't think any of those creative endeavors would have been fully realized had he not tested the waters first with Because the Internet. Even with its flaws, I recommend checking out the album and even the script if you're interested. Because imperfect things matter. Artistic growth matters. Looking back on how far you've come matters. Donald, what do you think of that? My emotions! My emotions! Don't it. It's that. La biblioteca. Me llamo T-Bone. La araña discoteca. Discoteca. Muneca. La biblioteca. Es un bigote grande, pero manteca. Manteca. Bigote. Gigante. Pequeño. Cabeza is nieve. Cerveza is bueno. Buenos días. Me gustas papas frías. Bigote de la cabra. Es camarón Díaz. Yeah, boy.